morning. Welcome to join Lamaan United Methodist Church online service. This is Pastor Hyo Sono. I hope and pray that you are doing well and stay safe. And I'm thinking of you so that you can experience God's love and grace through our service today. So let us prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into our worship. Please join me call to worship. Come, let us worship God who provides for us. Even though we whine and complain, God hears our cries. Lift up your voices in praise, for God has come to comfort you. Thanks be to God who forgives and heals our wounded souls. Come, celebrate God's steadfast love. Open our hearts, O Lord, and let us truly listen to your words. Amen. Let me go. 
Gracious Lord, how shall we do your will today? Will it be in acts of praise, in gifts shared, in prayers lifted? Who will you lead us to serve? Help us trust you. Help us listen. Bless this community as we come together in worship, in person and online. Encourage us, comfort us. Unite us and make our joy complete. Amen. Hi, boys and girls. It's Karen Perino. Have you seen God today? I have. I've seen a teacher, a parent, a cashier, a policeman, a food pantry worker. And when I looked into the mirror, I saw myself. That's right. Every time you look into the mirror, you see a little bit of God. Because God made you and God made you in his image. But it's even more than that. It's not the job that these people do, it's what they do and how they do it that makes them a reflection of God's love. You see, the Bible tells us that we were put here to do God's work on earth. We're to take care of his creation, we're to love one another, and we're to tell other people about God. That's a pretty big order. God has trusted us to do his work here on earth. And to do it right, all we have to do is ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? So every time you feed the dog, water a plant, give somebody a hug, or write a note of encouragement, you're doing God's work here on earth. That's pretty cool. Thank you, God, for all of the people that do your work here on earth, and thank you for entrusting me to be one of them. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning is Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 to 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him, and he was teaching, and said, 
By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I'll go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is easy to look to our own interest, but God calls us to look to the interests of others. For in so doing, we share the minds of Christ. So let us dedicate ourselves to lives of generosity and service as we offer our pledge, gifts, tithes, and offering. You may send your check via mail, you may give through online or give plus app. Thank you so much for your continued support through your generosity. As you offer, Bob will play special instrumental. Let us pray a prayer of thanksgiving. God of abundance, you fill us with the good things. You satisfy our thirst with water from a rock. You meet our every need. 
So from your rock, our blessings flow. Accept what we give in return, our hearts, our hands, our gifts, our love. Transform our gifts into blessing. Use them to answer the cries of a world in need. Amen. A drug enforcement administration officer stopped at a ranch in Texas and talked with an old rancher. He told the rancher, I need to inspect your ranch for illegal grown drugs. The rancher said, okay, but don't go in that field over there. He pointed out the location. The DA officer verbally exploded saying, Mr. I have the authority of the federal government with me. Reaching into his rare pants pocket, he removed his badge and proudly displayed it to the rancher. See this badge? This badge means I am allowed to go wherever I wish, on any land, no questions asked. Do you understand? The rancher nodded politely, apologized and went about his chores. A short time later, the old rancher heard loud screams, looked up and saw the DA officer running for his life, being chased by the rancher's big Santa got through this bull. With every step, the bull was gaining ground on the officer and it seemed likely that he would sure enough get gored before he reached safety. The officer was clearly terrified. The rancher drew down his tools, ran to the fence, and yielded at the top of his lung. Your badge! Show your badge! Authority issues. Authority is the theme running throughout today's gospel. The chief priests and elders take issue with Jesus' authority. The two sons challenge their father's authority. In Matthew chapter 21, Jesus confronts some of these highest ranking, most powerful, and more widely influential authorities within the Judaism of his time and place. These chief priests and elders Members of scribal elite class played very important and visible roles regarding religious practices, rituals, symbols, and the interpretation of sacred texts and Roman governments over the region. When Jesus encountered the authorities, he criticized them for not recognizing John the Baptist and his ministry as authorized from God. Jesus indicated that these religious authorities also failed to recognize the same in him in the teaching and work he does. So Jesus tells his parable after that exchange, after he has exposed to these particular leaders who are unable or unwilling to grasp how God might be knowable or even at work in other places or in other ways. Because if God is active and discoverable in the effort of someone like John the Baptist, who in the wilderness calling for a new world to come into being, a world marked by justice and changed lives, and recognition that God intends for more than just continuation of status quo, then perhaps these religious authorities who care about their religious languages, symbols, practices, and truth should be curious about people using their authorities to keep their eyes open for ways in which God might be made known or ways in which the purpose of God might be expressed. Then what is the authority? Authority is interior God-given gifts bestowed upon each one of us to act in this world on behalf of Him. So every day God authorizes us to enter and send us into His vineyard to act 
in this world on his behalf. Following Jesus or believing Jesus is about aligning our lives with Jesus so that we recognize the authority of God and we act on this authority in all of our relationships, in our reaching out to the world. That's what the chief priests and elders failed to understand. They chose to exchange their God-given authority for human powers. Sometimes we do too. That's what's happening in the world today. Look at our political system, at law enforcement, at the war throughout the world. Look at the conflicts in your own relationships. Those are all about power struggles, not authority. Our leaders exercise power, but very few exercise authority. In the exercise of power, we look to our own interest, but in the exercise of authority, we look to the interests of others. In other words, saying yes to God should lead a person to say yes to looking for God and yes to getting engaged in God's business, the business of seeing to the flourishing of justice peace, reconciliation, security, and restoration. For example, as you have a power of vote, you may use your authority to make this country better, where everyone is welcomed, accepted, respected, and loved. That's why Jesus, in his parable and his words immediately after it, praises tax collectors and prostitutes, people who by most appearances have not been seen any authority and have not claimed to say even yes to God, but have nevertheless responded to or found their place within God's activity. Therefore, a life of working in the vineyard is about playing one's part in God's ongoing work and enjoying God's benefits. Such a toil is not punishment or lifeless religious obligation, but it is about going where God is. There are so many places, issues, causes as vineyards where we might have been called to labor over the last few months domestic violence, imminent grief upon the loss of over 200,000 people in the U.S. by the COVID-19, racial injustice, protests, riots, ruling all human rights, poverty, abuse of power in political system, immigrants, immigration reform, gun violence, political unrest, you name it. Your list may be different, large, more personal, or more urgent. People of faith may not agree about exactly how to go about our work to address these problems and other issues. But we usually share a sense of outrage, pain, or dismay. Those feelings could very well be our kind of calling to go into the vineyard. It is easy to make pledges or say yes, but following through by working for long-term change is more difficult. Working in a vineyard implies patience and hard work. Progress does not occur overnight unless people come back and resume our work day after day, working as the congregation for anti-racism, anti for example, 
that would be very powerful. Phil Ramos is inviting us to join a Zoom small group discussion about racism to work together as a congregation to dismantle racism in our midst. You will receive an invitation. Please join us. If we fail to do so, it does not necessarily mean we are evil or worthless people. The religious authorities Jesus criticizes in the gospel were not either. But Jesus insists their vision had become too limited. They were not able to see what Jesus saw. But Jesus insists their vision had come to be widened because God might be there out among the vines. God might be waiting for us to transform our world through our all good intentions, through our all good actions, using God's given gifts of authority, not merely keep us busy, but because of an eagerness for us to recognize places where God can be encountered and God's intentions actualized. So dear brothers and sisters, perhaps this message is challenging you to consider the way we act as the second son. But there is also possibility that we as followers in the way of Jesus and members of the church may wind up like the first son, resisting the voice of God and refusing to follow, but eventually working as master's gardeners in an ever-growing garden. Kingdom of God is marching on forward, and nothing can stop its forward momentum. Nothing can prevail against it, not even the gates of hell. And you have a front row invitation to be part of it. So claim your place in the kingdom of God today using your God-given authority. May it be so. Amen. This is time for us to share our joys and concerns. George Lang's knee replacement surgery went well and he appreciates your prayers. Rebecca, Daughter of Elle and Julie Genova got married with Ted Khan last September 19. Congratulations and we wish all the blessings as you start a new journey as a couple. Pat Pesha celebrate her adoption of Nicole as a daughter. So congratulations. Bill Kern celebrated his 75th birthday last Friday, and he appreciates all of church family's birthday wishes, emails, cards, phone calls, even having passed the scene. He said this was such a great birthday. I am thinking of turning 75 again next year. Thanks. Arlene Nott celebrated her mother's 103rd birthday last month. Happy birthday to your mom. And also happy birthday to birthdays in September and happy anniversaries in this month. Loving God, thanks be to God for Christian marriage, birthdays, adoption, and the successful surgery. I ask you to pray for Neil Jensen, Jim, and Priscilla, Lord Week for healing and strength. Annie Weslowski is having her thyroid removed in October 6, so keep her in your prayer. And also Richard Mead, George Lang for their recovery after their surgeries. Also pray for Don Harden, Alborah's grandson, for his recovery after stroke. I also ask you to continue to pray for Steve G and Gina Walter. Greg, Joanne, and Jean Gozaki for their recovery from the COVID-19. 
Cheryl Wary also got the virus and she is in Silver Cross Hospital due to low oxygen. So keep her in your prayer as well as Steve Wary. If you have prayer concerns and joys to share, please send us the email, call us, or make a note so that we can live to your joys and concerns during our services. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and bring healing and mercy to those who are struggling with illnesses, virus, and grieving. Let us pray for the church, for the world, and all God's people. Loving God, we are tempted to give in to constant quarreling with you, with one another, with leaders and friends, fellow believers and ransom strangers. Our world is awash in animosity and fear, anxiety and distrust. Even though we know we are to be in the world, but not of it, we find it hard not to mirror the discord and anger all around us. We humbly come before you this Lord's Day and ask you to intervene, to work within us so that we have the ability to turn away from those actions and attitudes that prevent us from fulfilling your purpose through us and turn toward the one who shapes us for your service. As the world reels with upheaval, use us to bear witness to your peace. As we hear headlines with bad news, use us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. As our communities wrestle with wicked problems, use us to exercise holy imagination that helps the new thing you are doing emerge. As so many grow weary and worried, use us to bring relief and hope. Merciful God, our prayer list is not long. We cannot possibly name all the people, places, and circumstances in need of your compassion and transformation. So we trust that you know our hearts and hear our plea even when they are left unspoken. Hear our prayers. Bring your healing mercy upon those who are struggling with illnesses, the coronavirus, and grief. Pour out your care on those devastated by fire and floods. Wrap in love your children who cry to you in lament for all they have lost and cannot imagine living without. Grant your unwavering strength to your prophets speaking the truth in love to many as yet unable to hear it. Give you a peace that passes all understanding to those overwhelmed with anxiety and afraid of what tomorrow might bring. Confident that you know the needs and are already present and at work in every corner of your creation, we humbly turn over to you those things we cannot, we can no longer carry. As tarnished that you enlist us to do your will on earth, we ask you to show us what we ought to take, take on in order to be faithful to your call to work in your vineyard. We make our prayer in gratitude for your grace and in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Please share the peace with your loved ones.
Dear brothers and sisters, go bravely and boldly to this world of confusion and pain. Bring us healing words of love and forgiveness. Know the power, mercy, and grace in your life and use those wonderful gifts to serve God by serving the people. As you do so, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.